Well, I have six o'clock. Let's call our meeting to order. And we'll start with the roll call. Hankins. Are uh, here. Triplet. Bower Socks. Here. here. Dietz. Here. Olfest. Here. Vogel. Here. Sires. <laughs> Here. Okay. Well, let's uh, move forward here with approval of the agenda. I have a motion. I motion. make a motion. I'll Go ahead, Doug. Go okay. ahead. All right. I'll motion that we approve the agenda. Second. Okay. Now, when we're on this, is it easier to do? Uh, Individually, or can is I good enough? Does that work? You can do I and and nay, so that we can see if somebody. All, all those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Same time. Uh, I'm going to have to abstain because I was not at the last meeting. Position has it. Yes. All right. So, uh, Danny, is there any members from the audience that have comments or have you received anything uh, that we can take up now? I haven't received anything at this point. Okay, and there's, uh, to our knowledge, no one on the, that wants to comment. We do have a couple people on the phone. That are is there anyone that wishes to address the commission that, that's not on the agenda currently? All right, hearing none then, and we'll move on to uh, the uh, approval of the minutes. I, presume you've I make a motion to approve the minutes of um, the minutes. Okay. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Okay. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Oh, uh, same sign. Now we can move on to item number six, uh, the Zunkel Estates Plat One. Um, and I do, we'll do this in two separate um, items. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, we'll take item number A, 6A, uh, approving is there anyone that is there to speak to this? Uh, Vic Pagentini with Associated Engineering Company of Iowa. Good, thank you. You need my address or? Jenny, you need uh, you need name and address, right? I have the address for his uncle. Yeah. We're good. Okay. All right. Go ahead, thank you. Um, I'm the, with Associated Engineering Company of Iowa. I'm the one that did the plaque. Uh, it's a two lot plat in Polk County within your two mile review district. It was uh, two existing parcels that did not, for some reason, Polk County has gone through and said that any parcel before split before 2000 by plat of survey is no longer valid. So this plat is now a two lot plat, which is exactly the same two existing parcels <laughs> that exist on the assessor's page, but are, one of them is non buildable until it is replatted at this point. That's what the lot. One is being replatted so it can be built on. Okay. And I'll answer any questions you might have. Are there any questions? Um, Denny, the only question I had was there was a note here, I think, from Kathleen about the fact Polk County had a minimum lot of three side or three acres and now it's gonna be under that. Is that still an issue? I didn't point. Um, what to was um, additional right of way that if this if and when this parcel ever comes into Oak City, uh, that this additional right of way would be required. However, they couldn't dedicate it now because um, it, that would put them under Polk County limitation. However, the lot far exceeds Polk City's equivalent. So what, what they've done is they found that as a future right of way to be dedicated to the city at no cost to the city following annexation. That's in We've done that before on other plans of the survey, where the city is not actually 
taking ownership or responsibility of the road at this time in any way. And I okay. think the case of the county wants the road, it prefers their, their county road in right away, and sometimes they want it needed anyway, so they take it either way. So. Okay. So that means folks that need to <clears throat> okay, makes sense. Okay, um, are there any other questions? Hearing none, I presume we're ready for a motion. Do I have a motion? I would make a motion that we approve the preliminary plat uh, dated uh, per the engineer's report dated May 12th. I second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any other comments? If not, we'll have a roll call. Our socks? Yes. Deets? Yes. Olfest? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Sires? Yes. Hankins? Yes. Triplet? Yes. All right. Now we move on to item 6B, a consider recommendation to council to approve the final plat. Are there any concerns or questions there? If not, we have a motion. Maybe I'll go ahead and make that motion to accept the and recommend to council the final plat for the engineer's report dated May 12th and subject to the engineer's notations. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Have a motion and second. Any further comments? Let's have a roll call. Our socks. Yes. Eats. Yes. Olfest. Yes. Vogel. Yes. Sires. Yes. Jenkins. Yes. Triplet. Yes. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, item number seven, Big Creek Technology Campus Plat number four. Again, we have uh, preliminary and final, so we'll take the preliminary first. Um, uh, I presume there's a person to speak to this. Um, this is Paul Clawson with Civil Engineering Consultant. Um, 2486 Street, Unit 12, Irvingdale, Iowa. Um, here to speak on behalf of the owner. Um, we have a preliminary plat here in Big Creek Technology Campus. Um, and we'll be platting one lot and an out lot and two lots to be deeded as public right of way to the city. Um, this is, we're doing this in coordination with the school who will be uh, submitting a site plan at a future date um, for, for lot one. Um, I believe in the purchase agreement, they'll also be purchasing out lot Z. And we've also submitted public improvement drawings for the extension of East Vista Lake Avenue. And um, this plat meets all uh, ordinances and we'd ask that you recommend approval to council and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any questions from any of the uh, this is Kathleen, I did just want to mention that um, they are, the applicant or the future property owners at the school will be undertaking rezoning of this property um, at a later meeting. So the way the, the plan is set up, it meets all of the requirements for a non uh, residential building in the R1 zoning district, uh, but it, which also meets or exceeds all of the current zoning regulations. Okay, so um, we're the, the the zoning will come back at another time. Yes. That was just okay. Gotcha. 
Any other questions? Uh, just a couple of comments. I know I've expressed concern in the past about uh, wanting to preserve commercial zoning. Uh, I don't have uh, that concern in this specific case for the uh, small parcel of commercial zoning along uh, 3rd Street. Actually, uh, we, are, we aren't in sync with how things are zoned in comparison to our comprehensive plan. In our comp plan, we actually have the zoning moved a little bit further north and so weren't really even showing this as a commercial spot in our uh, zoning plan. Uh, uh, I am a little concerned about the loss of industrial, uh, which we'll have to talk about when this rezoning comes in. Uh, and certainly that could be satisfied in my mind uh, when we look at some other uh, comprehensive plan issues and other spots, perhaps moving some of our light industrial further north from its current site as well. Other than that, I did not have any issues. Okay, thank you. Any, any other um, concerns? Uh, just a, a question, I guess, looking at a trail easement on the south side of this property as well, Kathleen? Yes. Yeah, we're looking at one a trail easement that would go from 3rd Street across both the outlot and the school's property uh, that eventually could connect to a parkland area to the east. Okay. And then are, are we looking at four or five foot sidewalks on East Vista Lake? Um, technically, your, um, your code uh, only requires four foot. Right. Is, I, I thought I saw it written in there somewhere, maybe I thought it was referred to both ways, four and five. There was some discussion about them potentially providing five foot sidewalks, but the code only requires four foot. Okay. But again, the sidewalks on, the sidewalks on East Vista, uh, oops, kind of backing up a ways as we get in, this is almost more of a final plat issue, which is coming right up, but um, the, the developer is required to provide a sidewalk bond for four foot sidewalks um, they indicated they would provide them for five foot, but uh, four foot sidewalks on all street frontages. So that would include both North Third Street and East Vista Lake Avenue. Um, I anticipate they'll ask to have that, the one on East Vista Lake Avenue would be deferred by agreement uh, and be included as part of the site plan for the school. And that there'd be some kind of a development agreement um, with respect to North Third, where the developer would participate in the cost of the 10 foot wide sidewalk. In other words, we're not going to want to put in a four foot sidewalk along North Third, and then you just can't, you really realistically can't widen that to 10 foot. So we would look at some alternate ways to uh, have the developer participate to that same level. Okay. And that would go to be, be worked out before council approved the final plan. All right. All right. So what we're doing here is basically approving these plats and the rezoning and site plan will all come in due time. Yes. Okay. Are there any other comments, discussion? Hearing none, um, are we ready for a motion? Yeah, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we recommend to council approval of the preliminary plat for Big Creek Technology Campus Plat 4, subject to uh, city staff's and engineers' comments uh, dated May 3rd, 2020, including issues, comments, and recommendations. Say May 3rd. On May 13th, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm seeing May. Okay, I'm looking at yeah, May 13th. <laughs> I, I'm backwards here, May 13th. Thank you. Is there a second? second? Okay. Any further discussion? So we have roll call, please. Vogel? Yes. Styers? Yes. Hankins? Yes. Triplet? Yes. Sarasoff? <coughs> yes. Dietz? Yes. Dietz? yes. Olfest? Yes. All right, thank you. That will go to council. Uh, now we have uh, consideration for um, 
Big, Tree, Big Creek Technology Campus Plat 4, item number B under item seven, approve the final plat. Um, is there any discussion on this plat? The only thing I would, uh, Dennis, would want to mention uh, that really wasn't discussed with the preliminary plat is, number, is first of all, that the subdivision uh, divider, in other words, NAP properties will be providing a subdivision bond for the public improvements which includes the extension of East Vista Lake and the utilities associated with it uh, prior to uh, final plan approval since they won't be completing construction prior to that time. Um, and a second, the other item is just that there are some existing easements on what was um, uh, the uh, plat is a lot out there, and I apologize for that. It's uh, lot one of Big Creek Technology Campus Plat 3, which is being replatted as part of the northwest corner of the school's property. And there was a buffer easement there and a, an overland flowage easement. Neither of those will be needed now that that parcel is being, incorpor being incorporated into a larger parcel. I see. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, any there is the, the, the site plan for the school will need to uh, provide any off-site easements for stormwater management that they need to provide. Right, and that will come as part of the site plans and so on. Is yeah, that, yeah. Right. They haven't got that quite pinned down yet or else we'd be showing those on the final plat. But. Okay, all right. Okay, anything else? Okay, um, can I have a motion please? I'll make a motion that we recommend the council approval of the final plat for Big Creek Technology uh, Campus Plat 4, subject to city staff's uh, uh, and engineers' comments dated May 14th, 2020, uh, with related issues and, uh, and review comments and recommendations. Okay, I'll second. Second. We have a motion and second. Um, any further comments? Okay, let's have a roll call vote, please. Wolfest? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Sires? Yes. Hankins? Yes. Triplet? Yes. Bowersox? Yes. Deets? Yes. All right, thank you all. Well, we have- Thank uh, you for your time and consideration. You're welcome. I think we're looking forward to having that school. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, item number nine. Um, consider a uh, recommendation to council to approve uh, p and apparel site plan. Do we have anyone to speak to this? Yes. <clears throat> yes, uh, my name is Mark Thiessen. I'm architect with Angelo Architectural Associates, address 12314 Ridgeview Drive, Urbandale, Iowa, 50323. And on behalf of uh, Kay Farron, uh, at the owner of p and Apparel, we have put together uh, a site plan submittal and when working with Kathleen and Jenny on that. And uh, the project, uh, we believe we're asking for no variances, no um, exceptions. Uh, we're trying to uh, comply with the ordinances. And uh, I think it's went fairly smooth. And so. Uh, J uh, Kathleen, I guess I'll yield to you and maybe you can uh, uh, take it from there. Or do you want me to do more? Well, you may want to present just kind of the, the okay. ele building elevations and just in general, okay. a general description of the site plan okay. itself. Okay, we can do that. I know sometimes I'm not sure if you, okay, perfect. So um, the site sets uh, uh, at the corner, at the southwest corner of uh, uh, West Bridge Road and South Fifth Street, just west of the uh, Fairway Grocery Store, and it's on a, about a 1.1, a little over an acre site. It uh, we have uh, the owner has chosen to put the main facade to face South Fifth Street, and uh, with two approaches to the to uh, the the uh, into the site from South Fifth. The building is uh, 8, approximately 8,200 square feet, single story structure. We're uh, complying with the, uh, do I have control of this or no? Um, I can try to have you do it. Hold on a second. I don't think so, but. Okay, that's fine. Um, we, uh, 
we'll go. We are. Uh, we showed a couple of renderings there. It is a um, uh, single slope structure, and uh, we have um, yeah to with the complying with the sixty percent uh, masonry stone facade at the uh, on, on the portion of the building. The upper portion uh, is a uh, insulated metal panel that we had some, we proposed one, uh, kind of ran it by uh, the, the city uh, and Kathleen and uh, there were some objections. So we changed it to a much smoother uh, panel, look more architectural. It'll be a, a darker gray with a lighter um, uh, brick uh, base on the, on the base of the building. Uh, now, so, uh, uh, we have approximately 32 or 33 parking stalls. Uh, we did talk about some traffic in and out of the site. And so the closest entrance to the site, uh, our closest to Westbridge Road is an, en is an exit. And the, uh, the entrance uh, further to the south is the entrance uh, to accommodate for traffic in, in that area. To, to ease that. Um, I have with me um, Dan Southwick, uh, colleague, uh, engineer, civil engineer from Bishop Engineering, who has done um, a majority of the, uh, all of the civil engineering. We've worked together as a team um, and we've accommodated the, the storm water. There was a 30 foot wide uh, drainage Easement, uh, I think 15 feet is on uh, our on uh, the P&M property apparel site. The other um, the other 15 feet is um, on the apartment site that kind of runs right up to the row of garages that are um, just south of the so our south property line. And uh, uh, the city had asked for some traffic turning radiuses. We do not get. Uh, uh, Kay does not have um, semis coming into this site, but she does have uh, a series, you know, FedEx and UPS trucks are, are her delivery and drop off vehicles. So we wanted to accommodate that. And we, the drawing that's before you sort of shows uh, those turning radiuses. Uh, let's see. Oh, we have, a, we have an all masonry dumpster enclosure. We have two uh, wall mounted signs um, uh, since we have two street frontages and then we have one monument sign that we believe according to Kathleen meets the requirement of the, the uh, zoning ordinance. So at that point I guess I don't know uh, we have we have a little talk a little bit about the sidewalks we have uh, put a five foot wide sidewalk all the way along South Fifth Street comes up to the corner can cross over to the Fairways uh, site that does have a sidewalk in the right of way. I don't know that it extends further uh, east past Fairway, but uh, but at least it crosses over. And then we have extended the uh, sidewalk on our property since that's a DOT ditch area with a pretty good slope to it. We felt it would work better um, working with Kathleen to put the uh, sidewalk on the actual P&M site, the darker shaded area to uh, above, uh, just to the uh, right of the building that goes to the uh, west property line or the one at the top of your sheet um, is, we've asked for a sidewalk deferral on that 124 foot section since it's pretty much woods along um, to the adjacent property there owned I believe by the Army Corps so we're uh, asking to defer that, but uh, the sidewalk with where it stops would then turn and connect into the sidewalk in front of the uh, P&M uh, uh, store uh, facility. So uh, I guess there was a little subtlety. We are not maybe asking for a variance, but we we're asking for a, a sidewalk deferral. Anything else, Kathleen, you think we should um, talk about on here? Yeah, I had just a couple few more uh, review, you can see there's four review comments that are outstanding that will need to be addressed before this goes to council. Uh, the first is the provision of showing and providing the sidewalk easement that uh, Mark referred to. Uh, the second is that there are some ground mounted floodlights. Uh, the lighting plan shows 
um, more uh, lights than what the landscape plan does. So those, those type of up lights are required to be screen landscaping. So either the lighting plan needs to remove those extra floodlights, or we need, or additional landscaping needs to be provided on the landscape plan. And then the other items relate to uh, the storm water discharge, which is uh, in the vicinity of an existing tree, which will be removed. But the city also has a public storm sewer that's discharging in that same area. So we want to make sure that they're not in conflict and that the riprap is designed to accommodate the flows and velocity dissipation from both. Dan, let uh, Dan Southwick, would you want to talk to this, the last item? Yep, this is Dan Southwick, um, Bishop Engineering, 3501, 104th Street, Urbandale. Um, I think what she's talking about with that last item is that existing public storm sewer, uh, we're just going to be kind of cleaning up that area. There's kind of a drainage way already existing, um, which we will be releasing in as well. Um, it is matching the current flow path of the undeveloped site and it will be releasing at the same rates. Um, we're just going to clean it up and put a little um, kind of soil or erosion control protective um, practices in place just to kind of uh, make the area look a little nicer and just be a little more substantial. The, uh, as far as the, we've worked on the uh, easement, Dan has sent that to, that went out. I don't know if you've looked at that, Kathleen. Yeah, it was fine from my perspective. It went to Amy just to make sure. That she okay, and then the, de the site, uh, the deferral, there was maybe a little confusion on my part. Uh, Amy sort of sent us a sample, but I was, I'm uh, thinking that you guys were going to draft it the way you wanted it. Is that happening? And then we will just sign it, or do we need to draft it? I, I believe Amy should be sending that to you. Okay. All right. Because I'm not an attorney. I don't, you know, I don't want to hold myself out to be one to uh, draft it. If you want Dan to, we can, but we don't know what language you would like in there. So I think it's best if it comes from you guys. And then yeah. we would, we would just ask that. Since Kay has a, uh, the owner has a um, purchase agreement to buy this site based on um, P and Z approval, city council approval, that um, we get the documents in place, and if you know her, her offer is contingent that everything's accepted, and um, we just uh, instead of getting the existing owner involved in agreeing to something he doesn't really or they don't really un. Um, understand or have to get uh, fully knowledgeable about seem to complicate it so we're okay you can you can speak to that but uh, we're totally in agreement with signing both yes. the eas easement and the, the sidewalk deferral yes yeah I've got got that anything else Kathleen no not from my perspective okay well, are there any concerns or comments from members of the commission? Uh, yeah, I have a couple of them. I think uh, you know, probably three total. First of all, on the uh, the deferment of the sidewalk on the western part, I uh, would like to in the future see this kind of uh, deferment be limited as much as possible. As uh, part of our uh, current Polk City plan for visioning, we're trying to not have gaps and sidewalks and things of that nature. However, if there's ever a case that we would have a deferment uh, and then have an agreement in place to have it installed later, this would be it. I, I don't think having that sidewalk go all the way to the western boundary makes any sense at all. And so it would be an agreement to have that deferred with an agreement to put it in later if it was needed to be, which I can't imagine the scenario where that would happen. Thank you. Uh, my second item is the very small uh, item in the uh, write-up saying that a bike rack will not be installed. I'm just curious, is that a decision made by the future occupant or is that a decision made at the architect level? Um, the architect asked the owner, we work for 
we work for the owner and if the, they, you know, we do whatever they want. And at the time we asked, it was not uh, felt that they were going to want to put one in. So we, we said no, but um, we can we change can, that. Yeah, we can put one in. That's not a big deal. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and the reason I'm asking is uh, uh, the, the client in this case, uh, I consider to be an extremely bike friendly business in Polk City. Uh, oh, you know, they, they work very well with bikers, uh, you know, and they are very supportive of the, the Big Creek Bike Rider, I think it's renamed the Polk City Bike Ride now. Uh, very active in that. I mean, I could even see this establishment or this be building being the packet pickup location for those kinds of events. I, I would think it would be embarrassing for them to not have a bike, bike rack there if indeed that would ever happen. So at least would like to, um, you know, request that they reconsider that. Uh, and then also, uh, I guess I was a little surprised by the single pitch roof on the building. Uh, that is something I don't think we've ever approved before in this or uh, I, 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 in this area for, uh, without uh, without really mulling it over. Uh, I can only remember one other time where we had a single pitch roof and that was on the Lakeside Fellowship and it was after a lot of discussion and consternation that we approved that. And at the Lakeside Fellowship, their plan actually calls for a second building with the pitch being in the opposite direction when that is built to kind of make it not look like a single pitch building. So I was a little surprised by that uh, when I, I first saw that and also saw that we didn't have any comments or discussion about it. Uh, so anyway, that's just something for, you know, I, I don't, as I, as I read our architectural standards, uh, you know, they're really discouraged uh, we're looking for something with a bit more interest than that. So I'm just kind of curious what the, uh, you know, what the input from other commissioners would be. Uh, oh, and then just lastly, also on the directional movement of the, uh, of the traffic in the parking lot. I think this is a question for staff, I guess. If, if they would, if this would be built and they would discover that it would make more sense for the traffic to flow in the opposite direction, is that something, since we have arrows on a site plan, is that something that a site plan needs to be updated or can that just be worked with the city to change that traffic flow? From my perspective, it could probably work with the city, but the direction of flow came from our traffic engineers. They did not want to have right turning vehicles going into the parking lot that could potentially back up onto Parker. So, so okay. our traffic engineers specifically asked them to switch that. No, that I, the way you were, that makes sense. Uh, I, I personally can't exit the North Fairway parking lot exit uh, because traffic backs up off of Bridge Road. And so if I can't, if I can't make a right hand turn onto, uh, uh, Fifth Street, I can imagine that the folks com coming out of PM are, are going to have a, a more difficult time making a left-hand turn onto Fifth Street. But, but I, I just wanted to make sure that that would be easy to change uh, with working with the city and not having to have PM come back through this process again to change that. So, so anyway, those are my concerns, and I guess really the the, the major one, uh, I guess, would be the the roof line, and I'm kind of deferring that to hear comments from uh, from other commissioners as well, but, and, and also staff. Uh, any 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 comments? I guess, I guess at least I, I was looking at that and I think well because fairway is a flat roof and uh, and Casey's is a flat roof and stuff I, I just I don't see that it um, would be any different I guess for that particular area to have that um, be uh, you know what just a single pitch roof uh, that's just kind of how I was thinking about it there. 
Yeah, I guess I, I would agree with that, uh, Denny. I, you know, the building's only 60 foot wide in that dimension, so it's not as massive of a, a look as Lakeside might be from the front, which is, I'm going by memory, but I think it's over, well over 100 feet that you're looking at a single slope. And I, I think for that area, I think it looks very good. And by the way, congratulations to Kay. I think Thank one, you. <laughs> kind of a business going, expanding right now in our economy, and that's a great location for it. Um, so, but no, I don't have a problem with that. The only other question I had is what, what was brought up there by Ron is the traffic right there, right across from the fairway, but it sounds like traffic uh, has already been studied there. So I'm fine with that. This is Deanna. I would like to echo um, Ron's comments, and um, I remember the lengthy conversation that we had regarding Lakeside and um, our concern with the um, commercialness of the um, church and the roof line, and um, I do appreciate that this land is finally being developed, which I think is fantastic, and um, I and I don't want to put anything on hold or pause anything, but um, I think a different roof line would be um, ideal. And with regards to Casey's and Fairway and whatnot, we have asked many times, um, when are we going to be able to update our code to address some of our concerns regarding roof lines and out exterior um, building materials and looks so it's less of a industrialized kind of uh, business motif that we've kind of be seeming to be going towards um and more towards a unique polk city s-ness uh, <clears throat> excuse me this is doug sires um, uh, Ron and others, I don't really have a problem with the uh, single slope at all. And in fact, I think it makes it look less like a metal building, um, which is Thank normally you. double fixed. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and I appreciate the, uh, the owners and the architect uh, changing um, the upper facade to more of an architectural look. I think, that, I think that's very nice and appealing and, and that's appreciated. Um, the only other thing is, is uh, you know, we all shop at Fairway, and I don't do as much as probably some other people do, but uh, the in and out, that is a traffic problem right there. And um, I don't know how you control that anyway, but people are going to go in where they want to go in and out where they want to go out, but the arrows probably ought to be reversed. You know? That's how we, orig we originally had them that way, but engineering came back and requested them the other way, so we, we changed it. Now, engineering lives in Ankeny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Good. You know. Well, if they can be changed without have to go through a lot of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, coming back to us or anything else, it seems like it. you try it one way and see how it works. And, <laughs> and then... Oh, uh, yeah. All the parking is head end, so... It's it's move a uh, it's move two signs and repaint the arrows if you have to change if if it's a needed change. I don't think it's ideal with the separation from the intersection and it is tough now. But I kind of agree with Kathleen. I don't know that there's a better way to do it with Bridge Road and the traffic it brings in. So I guess I'd I'd agree to leave that how it is. Uh, yeah. Just just so uh, I wanted to clarify that the engineers when they're looking at it they're looking primarily at not interfering with bridge road traffic more than how long it takes to turn left out of this uh, location. And it may be that folks, some folks have to turn right instead of left if it becomes a big problem. But again, they're trying to protect the higher level streets is the priority in terms of protection. Yeah, well, there may, may be another traffic light there someday. <laughs> <clears throat> Any other comments or concerns? Uh, I would just like to say thanks to the commission for kind of giving me their, their opinions on that roof line. Uh, 
I certainly agree that uh, this building will not look out of place uh, given the neighborhood that it is in and uh, Fairway, Casey's, also the automotive uh, building. Those were all legacy buildings before our architectural standards were updated but I think this building will fit in uh, nicely with it. Uh, my concern lies more that we have some additional lands uh, to the north that will be developed. Uh, and I would hate to have this be a precedent to how those uh, buildings like behind the, the bank building and in that area uh, might end up looking like. That's my biggest concern yeah. is that this would end up being a precedent. Any other comments? If not, I think we're ready for a motion. Do I have a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion that we recommend to council approval of the PNM apparel site plan uh, subject to city staff and engineer comments uh, dated May 13th, 2020 uh, and reflecting those uh, issues, comments and recommendations. Okay. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any other comments? If not, we'll have roll call. Sires? Yes. Hankins? Yes. Triplet? Yes. Bower Sox? Yes. Dietz? Yes. Olfest? Yes. Vogel? Yes. All right. And I, I think uh, some folks said it, but I want to say it as well. Uh, I'm glad that we're going to be keeping this business in town and this will be a great location for it. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Kay, for being a good community member for us. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we're uh, looking forward to this. All right. Good. Well, thank, that, you. And uh, thank you to the, to the board. Greatly appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, that considers our action items. Um, reports and any other items here from council liaison? Too much to add, except that at Monday night's, last Monday night's council meeting, we ran into some hiccups with the uh, Snessler property, which I feel confident that we will be revisiting. And, and by, by the council revisiting? Yes. It's not yeah. items that would have to come back through the planning and zoning at this point? Uh, it's possible. I don't know that. <laughs> I guess we'll see, won't we? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, anything else, Ron? No, not that I can take out. Okay. All right. City manager? I have nothing. All right. Thank you. Staff? Anybody else? Okay. Uh, anybody from the commission comments? I just wondered is what's the status on the high V and, and quick star? Anything new there? We have no update on high V. Um, quick star has submitted some materials and I believe they are on schedule to come to P and Z in June. Okay. Kathleen, does that sound right? Yeah, they still have some comments to be addressed, but they are working on them. So that, that's my anticipation at this point in time. Okay. All right. Anything else, folks, for the good of the cause? <laughs> All right. Well, I guess if not, we'll uh, have a motion to adjourn. So I'll move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, thank you all and uh, stay safe. Thanks, folks. Yes. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.